Let's watch it. Let's watch it, boys. Dude, is this scary? Is this gonna be scary? House Hexagon presents. Okay. Wait, what did that say? Dude, this is closed? Case closed. Wow's darkest. Secret. Wow's darkest secret exposed. Huh. I'm afraid. I'm gonna start this oh. off by saying whatever the hell you do, do not look in the comment section below. Okay. Though I don't usually get many, if any, comments. Wait, is on this my a classic video? The ones that are there will no doubt spoil what is to come. So go into full screen mode and let me show you this, because I promise you, it's gonna blow your mind. I believe I've made a wow discovery that literally no one else has ever found. No matter how much I try to look it up, there's never duck, duck, go. any results. What is duck, duck, go? No duck, duck searches, no YouTube videos, nothing. And that's pretty damn surprising, considering this is a game from 2004 that we're talking about here. This is the vanilla WoW world map. As you can see, there's only two continents, Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes. Out of all the zones in these two continents, which one is the most forgettable? All right, time's up. I imagine that the vast majority of people probably answered with Desolus, Silica, Oh, a zone. Ultra oh. Mountains, Dead Wind Pass. You know. Okay, wait, wait. Suspects. Let me let me stop. I thought he meant I thought he meant out of the two, which one? Uh, okay. I want to say yeah. I mean, it makes sense to say Desolus, right? It gets overlooked. What's another one that gets overlooked? I it's got to be in Kalmador. It's got to be in Kalmador. Desolus uh, I guess you could say Feralis, but DM is in Feralis. Am I saying it right? Is it Feralis? I, dude, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say, because I was in, I was in Feralis a lot. Moonbrook? Wait, Moonbrook? In, wait, in, oh, oh, uh, Moonbrook is, uh, in, in, uh, in Thingy, um, in, uh, freaking, Westwall, that's where the that's where the defies. We learned about it the other day. Moonglade, yeah, yeah, yeah. Moonbrook is like where the we learned about it the other day in the other wild video where the the defies went and kicked out the people over there, and then now they have that area because they went about uh, doing the stuff wrong. Okay, uh, okay, yeah, okay. So I, it's desolate. I would say desolate. But there's one zone in vanilla that wild could be. that literally everyone knows about, but is almost universally forgotten. And that zone is Stone Talon Mountains. Oh, fuck. Stone Talon Mountains is a contested zone that shows True. a border with the Barons. And I Desolus. actually, I actually remember the fact questing that it's there. The contested zone is quite interesting in of itself, as despite there being many low-level horde quests available here, for Alliance players, there's almost nothing at all. Yeah. Uh -uh. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that if you're an Alliance main like me, you've probably never even been here no. before. The like the only, the only reason why I, I. Did that was because growing up I played a good amount of Horde. Okay. Horde itself has an extremely unusual design, and there really is nothing else like it in the game. It's essentially one giant valley that connects to three different open chasms that are completely different to one another. Due to the zone's odd layout and frustrating quests, even many Horde players tend to skip it entirely when leveling. But yeah. I'm not here to talk about the zone or even its quests, but something much, much weirder. We all know that WoW has a day-night cycle that is in sync with the server's time zone. If it's daytime in real life, then it will be daytime in game two. If it's nighttime in real life, then it will be nighttime in game two. A zone's atmosphere can change significantly depending on whether it's day or night, but this is true okay. especially for Stone Talon Mountains. During the day, Stone Talon Mountains just looks and feels like a pretty typical God looking dang, place. Dude, old orc. A bit of trees here, a bit of grass there, but at night, this zone and the way it feels to be in it almost completely changes oh shit dude from the hours of midnight to 5 a.m music no longer plays in the zone instead all you can hear is this strange wind ambience that sounds is that true really freaky what's weirder is that at night the entire zone has this creepy red tint to it for seemingly no reason. 
and there's a ton of fog that limits how far you can see. Not sure if you can really notice it here, but the difference when it's daytime is really, well, night and day. Now obviously, when I first discovered this, I was confused just as much as you probably are. Why is it like this? No other zone has effects like these at night. It just seems... weird. Dude, the raptor doesn't Again, exist in this no game. no matter how much I looked into it, no one had an answer. But that's not even why I'm making this, because, yeah, it's weird. But it could just be some sort of attempt at atmospheric immersion. Maybe it's like the... because like I'm the dirt? This because of a strange phenomenon Maybe it's... that kept happening to my character here. If you know me, then you'll know that I'm pretty much nocturnal. As in, seriously nocturnal. I'm always up at night and in the early hours of the morning because that's just how I like it. As a result, whenever I play WoW, it's always in the dark. That's how I noticed how weird Stone Talon Mountains was in the first place. In classic WoW, I had an orc warrior called Warzerk that I would occasionally level up to see what the Horde side of the game was like. Just a way to relax and see what I would have otherwise faced out on my life. Look at that, dude. Look at that gear. Main. Stone Talon Mountains was one of the zones I ended up leveling in. I remember being taken aback at what a weird, almost psychedelic dreamscape the zone felt like. It reminded me of somewhere where a nightmare would take place, but again, I didn't think anything of it's it. It's very eerie. Until this happened. This is a screenshot I took at 2.14 a.m. on the 20th of October 2020. I'm in the Windshear Crag part of the zone, and as you can see, my character is dead. You're probably thinking that a mob must have got me yeah. or something, but no. The no? reason I took this screenshot is because my character just died instantly for no reason whatsoever. He's, okay. He's about to enter a zone that no man has ever entered before, and a GM... There's basically... Okay, this is my theory before we continue. Don't tell me if I'm wrong or right. In this area, there's tripwire. And then there's also lasers. Invisible lasers and tripwire. And if you walk through it, it alerts the it alerts the GMs. And then the GMs are hiding something crazy. And then if you trip that, then they insta-kill you. Whatsoever. That's what I was I just think. running around doing some quest when he just dropped dead. At first I thought that maybe a high level rogue had got me then vanished or something, but Ooh, I didn't see What any. a fucker. And according to my combat log, nothing happened. He just died. I kept this screenshot because I thought I would put it in a few lasers of mine as at the time there was a lot of uproar about how badly Blizzard maintained classic WoW, with there being a ton of bots and gold sellers flying around. I figured it wouldn't be out of the ordinary for there to be bugs like this too, as after all, this is Blizzard we're talking about here. Either way, I rezzed up and carried on with my questing before heading go. off for the night. 24 hours later, and I am, once again, questing in the Windshear Crag. Everything was going smoothly, until once again, BAM. It happened again. Instant Whoa. death, no combat log, just dead. I had never experienced anything quite like this. I mean, it yeah, is a bit weird, isn't it? Could be buggy, but it's never been this bad. I looked back at the screenshot I took the night before and noticed something really unusual. Ropes. The time of death on both shots was oh. exactly the same. 2.14 Oh, shit. That was just way too much <coughs> of a coincidence to ignore. I tried to make a post on r slash classic wow to ask if anyone immediately got deleted to my character, but it got removed and then I was banned for no reason. So... Are we on to something here, boys? Yeah, pretty standard. I decided that this was way too much of a coincidence to ignore. So, I conjured a plan. The next night, at 2.14am, I would have my recorder on, just in case my character died again, so that I would Smart. have proof of this weird bug in action. You know what I would have done? Okay, hold on. I would have... I would have been on my hunter... And I would have, I would have used my, uh, eyes, uh, this, this spell right here, dude. I would have used, where is it? Eagle eye. I would have used eagle eye. That's what I would have done. Dude, and then you just map it out that way. Okay, let's go. The following is what I captured. Oh, shit. Oh, dude, this is going to be some paranormal stuff.
nothing. I waited around for a few minutes longer, but it just wasn't happening. I figured that it really must have been just a weird coincidence. Feeling disappointed, I turned off my recorder and carried on questing. Don't tell me. But then, boom. It happened again. This time at 2.47am. Three deaths in a row, on three different days. But why was this one at a different time than the others? The only difference I noticed between the last shot and the first two is that on the last one, I was at the charred veil part of the zone. Whereas why, with the first two, I was in the wind. Why wouldn't you go back to the, any of the other two zones? Sheer crag. So, I had another idea. What if I went to the Windshear Crag at 2.14 a.m. and had my recorder on then instead? Maybe there, there you go. it would happen again. So, once again, I set my character there and waited. I hate this. I hate this. Oh, dude, you're taunting. Holy shit. I now had video it evidence of this so-called bug in action. <clears throat> but honestly, at this point, I was starting to think there has to be something more to this. Out of curiosity, I wondered that if I went to the charred veil at 247 again, if it would happen there too. Sure enough, it did. 247. It just kills him. 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag and 2.47 a.m. Mm. in the Charred Vale. I didn't know what it was, but for some reason, at those times, my character would always just drop dead. It what is that? that what is that shiny GM thing? Playing some sort of <clears throat> practical joke or something like that. What but if, dude? We're not done yet. At the very top of the zone, I the surely hope not. Chasm. The Stone Talon Peak. A very leafy and soothing place compared to the other two. I wondered if the weird deaths occurred there too. Sure enough, they did. 2.28 a.m. I tested this again the next day, and it happened yet again. 2.14 a.m. in the Windshear Crag. 2.47 okay, a.m. Okay, he's got it all mapped Vail. out. 2.28 in the Stone Talon Peak. Every night, at those times, my character would die without failure. I feel like the ending. I feel like the ending of this is going to be like. I feel like the ending is going to be like this. Explanation: It would never happen in the valley part of the zone, only in the chasms at those exact times. This wasn't a coincidence at this point. I tried to see if anyone else was in the zone at the same time as me, but literally no one ever was. Not too surprising, not. as this character is on Dragonfang, which is, yeah, a very dead server to say the least. None of my friends still played, so I couldn't exactly ask them to get a subscription Damn, that's, just that to sucks. test this. And whenever I would ask other people to come to Stone Talon Mountains so that I could watch them drop dead, they were surprisingly uncooperative. I decided to <laughs> do some God. hardcore research to see if anyone else had noticed this, scrubbing almost the entire internet for even a nugget of information. But alas, nothing. Well, nothing, except that two years ago, back when Classic WoW launched, an old Blizzard developer who had long since left the company, Mike Crond, did a Q and A Fucking on the Mike. R slash WoW subreddit, whereby he answered people's questions about what it was like developing the vanilla game. In his opening remarks, he mentioned that he was behind zones such as Desolus, Feralas, Ashenvale, and Stone Talon Mountains. That fucker. Despite dude. the Q and A being two years ago now, I noticed that Mike was very active on Reddit. Albeit, almost always posting about non-WoW related stuff. Now, I'm not usually one to pry, but man, if anyone knew what was going on here, it would be this guy. And I'm in way too deep to quit now. Does he talk to him? I just had to ask. So I did. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I had no idea how to open a conversation with a guy who I don't know, and who doesn't know me. You just say, hey, what's I'm up? I'm a journalist, I'm a WoW player. By nature, I'm very antisocial and tend not to talk to people unless you just they start talk off to with me. hey. But this guy wasn't just going to talk to me by himself, so I decided to try to play it cool. Didn't want to come off as too pushy or anything like that. 
Is it true you worked on Vanilla WoW back in the day? Honestly, I didn't expect to get an answer. But shockingly enough, he responded almost instantly. What? Yup. Well, <laughs> it's better yep. than nothing, I guess. The ice was broken. I just had a question about one of the zones. Nothing serious, just some trivia that I wondered if you could answer. Two minutes later, shoot. Talkative guy. Wow, yeah. I've been on Classic Talk WoW recently and leveling up in Stone Talon Mountains. I've noticed that for some reason, my character dies at set times in the early hours of the morning for seemingly no reason. I mean, I'm already pooping I know it in the bonkers. shower. My Do boy. You have any idea Yo, that is? there it is. It's Yo, how have you been? Thank you. for days now. After I asked this, the guy just went completely silent. Wow. I'll be honest, I was pretty pissed off. If anyone would know why, it would be this guy. And he just bailed on me for no reason. I figured wow, the dude. was lost and that I'd never know what was behind this. And with my limited audience, there was no way I could make a big enough deal out of it to try to get people to figure it out. So, case closed, I guess. No. Okay. Or so, I thought. I am not joking with you. Ten months later, I get another message from Mike. The what? message literally just said, The SoCal Lady Killer. I'm like, what? No response. Guy no just goes fucking way, again. dude. The SoCal Lady Killer? What the heck was that? SoCal Lady Killer? I thought killer? that perhaps he had meant to message someone else, and this was sent to me by accident. SoCal Lady Killer? I decided to look into it, and Southern... this is what came up. Wait, Southern California Lady Killer? Is it, wait, is that, is that what that is? The SoCal Lady Killer is the nickname given to an unidentified serial killer who is believed to be behind the murder of three women in Southern California oh, throughout shit. the years of 1995 and 1996. Though there is no direct evidence that links the three murders together, the what? modus operandi of the killer was seemingly identical in all of the cases, with the victims' bodies being mutilated in an almost identical fashion each time. The three women, all of which were prostitutes, were believed to be lured to a secluded area by the killer, whereby they were then murdered. Hold on, dude. It okay. Every every time every time is for one of the times of death of, of the one of the ladies. Maybe. I don't know. Again, I had no idea what this had to do with what I asked until I read this part. The first victim was twenty eight year old Whitney Fangson. On the second of August nineteen ninety five, her body was found on the outskirts of the wind shear lumber mill. Police reports state that she was officially declared dead at 2.14 a.m. What the fuck, Four dude? Four months later on the 5th of December 1995, 25-year-old Sophie Riven was found in an almost identical state at a hotel room in the nearby village of Los Chared. Police reports state that she was declared dead at 2.47. So we've been saying charred instead of... The third and final victim was 32-year-old Amy Rassan, who two months later on the 17th of February 1996 was found dead by climbers at the base of Sockle Peak. Police reports state that she was declared dead at 2.28 a.m. Wind shear lumber mill was the basis for Windshear Crag. Lost Chared was the basis for the Chard Vale. Sockle Peak was the basis for Stone Talon Peak. In addition, the timing of the victim's deaths correlate exactly with the timing of my characters. The mystery had been solved. The seemingly random deaths are an easter egg referencing the SoCal Lady Killer. But... That's a pretty weird Easter egg, don't you think? Dude, that is I went to ask so Mike fucking what dark. Earth made him want to add that in the game. But again, I got no, no reply. Response. No way. But this time, it was different. You see, in the past when I was blanked, Mike was still actively using Reddit obsessively and he was, uh, on a daily basis. And he was probably but ever since that last message, he had stopped completely. 
Not many people know this, but the state of California actually has an online public database of all its residents that states basic information about them, such as their criminal record, driving viability, and yes, whether they are dead or alive. Well, you're never gonna believe there's what no, I There's no way My he's- states basic information. This is, is this a, just a random human? Because the date of birth is 1994, and is he the, is he, is he the, the son of one of them? ...about them, such as their criminal record, driving viability, and yes, whether they are dead or alive. Well, you're if that's never even him. believe what I found. Michael John Crond, 54, deaf by suicide on the 13th of August 2021 the exact same day that he last messaged me ladies and gentlemen Mike Crond World of Warcraft developer from 2004 to 2006 was the SoCal Lady Killer Stone Talon Mountains a zone which he designed is nothing more than a direct reference to the crimes he committed 10 years prior to joining Blizzard it is an open mockery of his victims, hiding the truth in plain sight while taking great pleasure in how no one else can see it. What Typical the serial fuck? killer behavior. But if you aren't convinced yet, then let me show you this. Every single chasm has a rare mob that is a direct reference to one to of the, the victims. victims? No Whitney Fangson died outside of the Windshear lumber mill. Meanwhile, in the Windshear Crag, there's an NPC called Taskmaster Whipfang. Sophie Riven died in Lost Chared. Meanwhile, in the Chard Vale, there's an NPC called Sister Riven. Amy Rassan died on the base of Sockle Peak. Meanwhile, in the Stone Talon Peak, there's an NPC called Sentinel Amma Rassan. The cherry on top. In the only safe place in the entire zone, the Sunrock uh, Retreat creepy. is an NPC called Crond. Crond, the Butcher. So the question you're probably asking yourself is, why? Why would he commit suicide? Well, They're on the answer him. becomes crystal clear if we go back to the SoCal Lady Killer's wiki page. It reads, after being a cold case for over 25 years, on the 2nd of August 2021, LAPD Police Chief Ed Jens announced that the SoCal Lady Killer case had been reopened due to advances in forensic technology that may help finally bring the victims some justice. Mike Crond knew that he was about to be found out. Thus, he ended his own life as to escape justice. But folks, do you want to know the worst part about all of this? The worst part is... I'm scared. I just made all that up. That's right, Mike Crond is not a serial killer. In fact, Mike Crond isn't even real. Hell, his picture isn't even real. It was generated by an AI. There's no such thing as the SoCal Lady Killer, and my character didn't even die randomly in the Stone Talon Mountains. I just got a friend of mine to use the neutral auction house to trade me a dark rune. Hell, even the character isn't even the same. So, the question you must be asking okay, is... Okay, dude. Why? Why did I make up this entire story? Well, you see, it's simple. If okay, I dude. can come up with an interesting and somewhat believable story that grips people enough to keep them listening for 20 minutes about the pissing Stone Talon Mountains, no less... Then Blizzard has no excuse to not write a good story of their own, especially with their ridiculously overpaid writing team at their disposal. Dear Wow Law Team, oh, get it shit. together, you absolute amateurs. Wow. Dude, that is so fucking good. I, dude, I was going to show this i should still show this to sean holy i should show this to sean holy fuck she would be like so into this because like we we've lately been watching a lot of like different like uh like uh you know like true crime holy shit it dude it 
all of that is it's so fucking true like it's so good wow dude holy shit all that to shit on steve nizzer is it wait when was this made premiered on oh okay so okay yeah wow dude that's so good okay you're the first i mean dude there's no way it wouldn't right everything just kind of made sense wow that is so fucking good so good oh so the, the th okay wait so the thing the thing about this i was about i swear i don't know if you guys saw me like in game i was about to go over to stone talon and see if like if i could find the npcs and stuff like that that would have been fucking so crazy jasmine did but it still got him see i wasn't going to do it i i, I wanted to like do all of that i was gonna do if you didn't if he this wasn't a big like joke i was going to go and google everything i was gonna google everything and then i was going to uh i was gonna go to the zones and and see because i thought that that would have been fun follow me on twitch.tv slash mickle yeah 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 yeah